the examination system. In the Qing dynasty, government administration was coveted employment. The empire was large, powerful, and sprawling. It governed an area larger than today's China from a northern capital at a time before telegraphs, telephones, or other modern communications. Messages were sent by post that could take weeks depending on the distance. So regional administrators were important and powerful. The Chinese system, which had lasted for many dynasties, was based on the examination system. To be a senior administrator, one had to pass three successive and grueling examinations. These examinations were about mastering classical and Confucian teachings. Successful administrators had to be knowledgeable about poetry, the classical arts, and lessons of governance and philosophy almost 2,000 years old. During the Qing Empire, around 2 million candidates sat for the lowest level of examinations at the county level. Candidates could sit twice every three years, but it had a pass rate of around 1.5%. The next level, the provincial stage, had a 5% pass rate. And the final metropolitan stage had a 1.5% pass rate. And as the population increased, those ratios may have worsened further. In 1699, a 100-year-old man was still trying to pass the exam and was brought into the exam room by his great-grandson, who was trying it for the first time. Revolts were often led by failed examination candidates. For example, the Ming Dynasty's end was caused by insurrections led by a failed examination candidate. The Taiping Rebellion, which will be discussed soon in this podcast, was led by a provincial school teacher who had repeatedly failed the civil service examinations and may have suffered a mental breakdown as a result. There were lots of ambitious but unsuccessful examination candidates in Qing China. Under the Qing Empire, there's also positive discrimination in favor of ethnic Manchu candidates. They benefited from quotas and an alternative examination system. They could choose to translate passages from the classics and pass an archery test instead of the traditional exams. And bribery by those who did pass the examinations and get an official post was also a major issue in the Qing Empire. An infamous case was He Shen, a favorite of the Qianlong Emperor, who was grandfather of the Daoguang Emperor, who was on the throne during the Opium War. He Shen was a top administrator for 26 years and in charge of four key boards, including civil office, revenue, war, and punishments. He also supervised the palace examinations. After he was impeached in 1799, an official conservative estimate calculated his assets to be worth twice that of the government's annual budget, and he possessed more than 10 million ounces of silver, 600 pounds of top-quality ginseng, 550 fox hides, 850 raccoon hides, 56,000 sheep and cattle hides, 460 European clocks, thousands of estates and residences, and he had 600 concubines. Ultimately, he obeyed the emperor's command to commit suicide, and his property was confiscated. But corruption and patronage were widespread. In the early 1800s, for example, 6 million tails of silver were allocated each year for the Yellow River Conservancy, but only about 10% found its way to the public project, according to estimates. Corruption was so expected that less corrupt ones sometimes had to appear to be corrupt to have social status. One notable case, when a less corrupt official retired and moved back to his home community, his family filled boats with 80 wooden crates loaded with bricks so that locals would think it was the riches he had hoarded over his five-decade-long career. Thanks for listening to the Chinese Revolution series. Please click subscribe to receive future episodes.